Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera kepada semua. Hari ini saya akan bincangkan soalan mitochondria SB025 untuk persediaan PSPM 2 2020-2021 dan uh, soalan yang saya akan bincangkan adalah di bawah tajuk transport system. So let's we look on the first question. Jadi mari kita lihat soalan pertama. So this is the first question with reference to the parts of the conducting system of the heart explain why the ventricles contract from the apex upward to max. This question actually relate with the process or subtopic uh, initiation of heartbeat. So let we do some revision for the initiation of heartbeat. There are several structures in the heart that relate with the explanation of initiation of heartbeat. Uh, the structure involved start with the SA node or sinoatrial node, the atrial ventricular node, AV node, the bundle of C's, and left and right bundle branches, and Purkinje fibers. Purkinje fibers. Okay, so back to the question. The question asks why the ventricles contract from the apex upwards. So the answers are because impulses are carried to the apex in the bundle of leaves and bundle branches, and the fibers leave the bundle branches at the apex to branch through ventricle walls. So these are the two reasons uh, why the ventricle contracts from the apex upwards. Now let's remove the question number two. The diagram below shows pressure changes in the cardiac cycle. Question asks you to describe what happens immediately after X in the diagram. So this is the X in the diagram. Um, this uh, question relates with the cardiac cycle. Atrial and ventricular diastole, atrial systole, ventricular diastole, and ventricular systole and atrial diastole. Jadi untuk ketiga-tiga step ini, ada perubahan uh, pressure yang berlaku dalam setiap atrial and ventricular tersebut. Contohnya, apabila atrial dan ventricular mengalami diastole ataupun relax, phase, ke Empat-empat bahagian ini iaitu left and right atria, left and right ventricle keempat-empat bahagian ini akan mengalami tekanan yang sedikit rendah. Namun apabila atria mengalami systole ataupun ventricle mengalami systole iaitu contraction, bahagian-bahagian tersebut akan menunjukkan tekanan yang tinggi untuk membolehkan darah ataupun blood force into the next part or chamber of the heart. Jadi berbalik kepada soalan ini, soalan bertanya, what happens immediately after S in the diagram? And the marks are given three marks. Let's re relate the pressure changes in this graph to the events that happen in the cardiac cycle. So the dotted line here is referring to the left atrium. We can see here that the left atrium pressure is increases. This refer the pressure increase because the atria undergo systole or contraction. So it's related with the ventricle pressure that lower than atria because at this time when the atria undergo systole or contraction, the ventricle pressure or the ventricle undergo diastole or activation. And when the ventricle pressure start to increase. This shows that the blood already fill in the ventricle and the ventricle is undergo contraction or systole to force the blood into the aorta. So we can see here that aorta pressure also starts to increase because the blood now is forced into the aorta. And when the ventricle pressure increases, we can see that what happened to atrial pressure, atrial pressure is decreasing. Atrial pressure decreasing because atria now undergo diastole phase or relaxation. Relaxation or diastole 
that happen to atria means the blood filling into the atria. Thus, there is a time. Thus, time by time, we can see that the pressure in atria start to increase. This is not refer to the atria undergo contraction or systole. No, That's, this is not. When the pressure in atria is increasing at this area, this is not shown that the atria undergo systole. No, or contraction. No, because at this time the ventricle is undergo contraction or systole. So what happened to atria? Atria undergo diastole or relaxation. But why the pressure in atria keep increasing? This is because the blood flow into the atria. During atria diastole or atria relaxation, the blood filling into the atria. Jadi apabila darah memenuhi bagian atria, semakin lama, pressure dalam atria itu tinggi kerana dipenuhi oleh darah. Then, when the ventricle start to decrease in pressure, this shows that the ventricle undergo diastole. So the pressure in the ventricle start to decrease and become lower and the ventricle pressure lower than atrial pressure. We can see here in the graph that ventricle pressure become lower than atrial pressure. At this time, where the ventricle pressure is lower than atrial pressure, or in other words, atrial pressure is higher than ventricle pressure, this will cause the AV valve to open. And as AV valve or atrial ventricular valve to open. Jadi apabila AV valve open, apa yang berlaku adalah darah dalam atria itu tadi akan rush into the blood. So the ventricle will fill with the blood after the AV valve open. So to answer the question of what happened immediately after X in the diagram, a three mark, the answers are pressure in ventricle is below than pressure in atrium. That will cause the AV valve to open and the blood flow or rush into the ventricle. And yes, why the blood flow in atrium? But we can bracket the answer because at this time, both atria and ventricle actually undergo a diastole or relaxation. Thus, both are now undergo blood filling. Cuma dalam jawapan ini, kita bracketkan atria sebab uh, kita nak tekankan dan beritahu bahawa apabila AV valve ini terbuka, event yang berlaku di situ adalah darah yang sememangnya telah berada dalam atria tadi akan terus masuk ke dalam ventricle. Okay. okay. Let's remove to question number three. Some people suffer from valve regurgitation. This is where the heart valves do not close properly. What effect that valve regurgitation of the semilunar valve will have on blood flow in the heart. Mark give is only one mark. Kita lihat dulu di manakah kedudukan semilunar valve. Semilunar valve adalah uh, di antara aorta dan left ventricle iaitu di sini dipanggil juga sebagai aortic valve dan juga di antara pulmonary artery dan right ventricle dipanggil di sini sebagai pulmonary valve. Jadi kedua-dua pulmonary valve dan aortic valve adalah semilunar valve. Jadi soalan tanya, apakah yang berlaku kepada blood flow di dalam jantung sekiranya semilunar valve ini tidak tutup secara proper, do not close properly because it undergo valve regurgitation. Jadi jawapannya adalah there will be back flow of blood into the ventricles after the ventricle have contracted. Satu markah. Okay, we move to question number four. An electrocardiogram ECG measures the electrical changes occurring in cardiac muscle as a heart is beating. An ECG trace for a healthy person 
and an ECG trace for a person suffering from heart disease are shown. Jadi ini adalah tentang electrocardiogram ataupun ECG. Uh, mari kita buat revision sedikit tentang ECG. Jadi ECG adalah um, electrocardiogram. Ada beberapa wave yang awak kena tahu dalam ECG ini iaitu P wave yang menggambarkan ataupun melambangkan atrial systole, atrial contract. QRS complex ini adalah melambangkan ventricular systole ataupun ventricular contract dan akhir sekali adanya T wave yang represent sebagai ventricular diastole. Jadi back to the question. ECG yang ditunjukkan oleh question for ini merujuk kepada ECG untuk healthy person ataupun healthy heart dan juga ECG that measures from suffering heart ataupun disease heart. Kita boleh perhatikan di sini uh, keadaan yang tidak normal pada QRS complex. Seharusnya QRS complex bentuknya begini tetapi dalam disease heart keadaannya seperti ini. Jadi merujuk kepada soalan For ARC to describe the road taken when electrical impulses are transmitted from the sinoatrial node as a node to the muscles of the ventricle in a healthy heart. So ini kita rujuk semulalah soalan pertama tadi tentang initiation of heartbeat yang bermula daripada SA node. Jadi bagaimanakah road taken uh, for that electrical impulses from the SA node? Jadi dua markah adalah true cardiac muscle to atrial ventricular node meaning from the SA node the impulse um, transmitted to atrial ventricular node and then a long bundle of his and Purkinje fibers. Jadi untuk ketiga-tiga poin ini mana-mana uh, dua poin untuk mendapatkan dua markah. Okay, untuk soalan 4B pula, soalan bertanya explain how information from this ECG trace suggests that the damage caused to the disease heart, this one, is unlikely to have affected the sinoatrial node to marka. Maksudnya untuk ECG yang trace from disease heart ini, um, bagaimana kita boleh buktikan bahawa ECG yang trace from disease heart ini bukan Uh, terkesan ataupun disebabkan oleh sinoatrial node. Jadi kita tahu ya pelajar-pelajar semua bahawa sinoatrial node um, yang boleh menyebabkan atrial contraction kaitannya. Sinoatrial node apabila menghantar impuls ataupun initiate the impulse, impuls itu akan dihantar ke keseluruhan atria dan akan menyebabkan atria systole iaitu P wave ini. Jadi kita dapati dekat sini P wave untuk disease heart ni sama saja seperti P wave untuk individu yang sihat. Maksudnya sinoatrial node tidak terkesan apa-apa. Tapi yang kita perhatikan di sini sekarang adalah dekat QRS complex yang melibatkan ventricle systole untuk disease heart ini tidak normal seperti yang healthy heart. So the answers are true cardiac muscle Sinoatrial node in the right atrium trace from healthy person is identical to the trace for the disease heart in the region of the atria. Ataupun kita boleh letakkan point only differences seen in trace for ventricle. Now let's we proceed with question number five. A baby was born with an abnormal heart. The diagram shows the heart of this baby. There is a hole in the septum between the two ventricles. So ini adalah diagram uh, jantung baby yang tidak normal dan ada juga uh, ada juga lubang okay, uh, di septum between two ventricles. Septum adalah kawasan di tengah-tengah ini dan merujuk kepada soalan ini katanya ada hole dekat septum di antara dua ventricle ini. Jadi kita lihat apakah soalan 5A. Identify the problem with the blood vessel of this heart. Daripada diagram ini, soalan minta kita kenal pasti apakah masalah dari segi blood vessel jantung ini. So, kita, so bila kita perhatikan di sini, kita nampak uh, abnormality itu adalah apabila um, aorta dan pulmonary artery ini tidak bersambung dengan ventricle yang betul. Okay, kita nampak tak normal ni sambungan antara 
uh, sambungan antara aorta dan pulmonary artery ni tidak disambungkan kepada ventrikel yang betul. Okay, itu dia punya abnormality. So that the answer is the aorta and pulmonary artery are attached to the wrong ventricles or the wrong way around. Okay, sepatutnya uh, pulmonary artery ni perlulah bersambung dengan uh, right ventricle. Manakala aorta mestilah bersambung dengan left ventricle. Tapi sekarang sebaliknya. Okay, ataupun jawapan yang lain adalah allow aorta leaves the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery leaves the left ventricle. Okay, so itu adalah masalah dalam blood vessel of this heart. Satu markah saja. Untuk question 5B pula soalan tanya, the baby survived because of the hole in the septum of the heart. Is then how the hole in the septum allowed this baby to survive? Three marks. Soalan beritahu awal-awal tadi ada kewujudan lubang dekat septum di antara both left and right ventricle. Soalan minta kita explain how the hole in the septum allow the this baby to survive. So jawapannya adalah the hole that present in the septum between left and right ventricle allows all oxygenated and deoxygenated blood to mix between the two ventricles. Thus oxygenated blood Uh, can travel to the body or enter aorta ataupun deoxygenated blood uh, can travel to the lungs or enter pulmonary artery. So this situation provide some oxygen for respiration for this baby. So that is answer for question number five. Okay, let we proceed with question number six. Starting with the heart full of blood outline the stages of the cardiac cycle. So basically this question asks you to explain ataupun describe about cardiac cycle. There are the three phases in it. So the first point is through cardiac muscle, atria contract or atria systole occurs. I'm referring to this phase number two. Okay, so what happened is the, the atria systole or atria contract will force blood into the ventricle And after that, the ventricle contract or ventricle systole occur, referring to this phase number three. And the, this, when the ventricle contract or ventricle, ventricle systole occur, it force, force blood into aorta and pulmonary artery. So at this time, what happened is atrial ventricular valve close, preventing bad flow into the atria. Sebab ventricle pressure tinggi, jadi AV valve akan tertutup untuk menghalang uh, ventricle, darah di ventricle masuk semula ke dalam atria. Ini sebenarnya boleh menghasilkan uh, lap sound. Okay, first sound lap. And then next is both atria and ventricle then relax according to this phase. Uh, and so heart fills with the blood. And at this phase, at this phase, semilunal valve are closed. At this stage, the stage meaning uh, referring to the stage of atria and ventricular diastole ketika ini uh, semilunar valve close di mana akan memberikan menghasilkan second sound iaitu dark. So that is the answer for question number six. Right now let's we proceed with the question number seven. Figure below shows the possible pathways taken by water across the roots of plants. 7a. How could the nitrate ion enter the root if the concentration of nitrate ion outside the plant is less than the concentration inside root hair cell? One mark. Well, 7b question is, the cell walls of cells in endodermis often contain the substance suberin. Explain the function of this substance to Max. So let we do some revision about this uh, transportation of water in plant. Jadi, soalan tanya bagaimana ion dekat kawasan luar root hair ini iaitu di kawasan tanah boleh diangkut masuk ke dalam root hair ini walaupun dalam keadaan jumlah ion yang di luar ini sedikit berbanding di dalam root hair. 
Okay, sebelum kita jawab soalan itu, mari kita buat revision sikit tentang um, pathway of uh, water transported anion from the root hair into the xylem vessel of root. So, ada tiga pathway yang terlibat iaitu apoplastic, asiplastic dan juga transplant pathway. So, apoplastik merujuk kepada pergerakan air dan ion dekat area cell wall yang berwarna pink ini. Manakala simplastik pula merujuk kepada pergerakan air dan ion yang um, berlaku dekat cytoplasm of plant cell. So, from one cytoplasm of one cell to another cytoplasm of one cell. Dan transplant pathway merujuk kepada kedua-dua pathway tersebut iaitu apoplastik dan simplastik. So, kedua-dua apoplastik dan simplastik pathway itu merujuk kepada transplant pathway. Jadi, uh, balik kepada soalan yang pertama tadi, 7A, how cool the nitrate ion enter the root? If the concentration of nitrate ion outside the plant is less than the concentration inside root hair cell. Jadi jawapannya adalah active transport. Soalan kedua, 7B. The cell walls of cell in endodermis often contain the substance ruberin. Explain the function of this substance. Jadi kita lihat dulu. Kita lihat kawasan endodermis adalah di kawasan ini. Okay, maksudnya uh, dari segi struktur root plant itu, daripada root hair, ada epidermis, ada cortex, kemudian ada endodermis, baru akhirnya ada steel ataupun xylem vessel of root. Jadi di endodermis inilah adanya suberin. Jadi soalan tanya, explain the function of this substance. Maksudnya function suberin molecule itu. Dua markah. Suberin act as a waterproof material and this suberin divert water from apoplastic road to simplastic road. Or in the other words, this suberin prevents water and ions from moving through the cell walls. Or also can be put as one of the answer, suberin regulate the movement of water into the steel. So what is steel? Steel ni merujuk kepada um, vascular bundle of the plant, iaitu uh, xylem and flower. Okay. Next, we proceed with question number eight. Aphids and spittle bug are small insects that have mouth parts adapted for sucking liquids. Aphids feed on flower sap and spittle bug feed on xylem sap. So question asks you to suggest why aphids are show faster growth rates than spittle bug to max. Jadi kita perhatikan di sini aphids ni, dia this this aphid uh, this organism uh, sucking the phloem sap compared to spittle bug that feed on xylem sap. So ada apa dalam phloem? Phloem sap ada sucrose. Ha, itu yang menyebabkan aphids ini akan grow faster compared to spittle bug sebab dalam phloem sap ada sucrose. Thus, to get two marks, the answers are aphids feed on phloem sap which contain sucrose. The sucrose provide energy to the aphids for growth. So, that is the reason why aphids, aphids show faster growth compared to spittle bug. Now, we go to question number nine. Explain the term source and sink as applied to the transport in plants to mark. So, before we proceed answering this question, um, the, the source and sink terms actually relate with the how sucrose being translocated in the phloem by pressure flow hypothesis. So in this pressure flow hypothesis, I already suggest to you guys during the uh, PKA program last last two weeks, you can try to relate this pressure flow hypothesis with the formula of 3SHP. What are the 3S? The 3S refer to the source, 
to the sink and to the sucrose. Source sink sucrose. While the HP refer to the hydrostatic pressure. So basically the pressure flow hypothesis. Um, you must, yeah, you must relate with the source. You must relate with the sink, sucrose. And the factor that caused the flow and step of sucrose being translocated from the source to the sink is because the hydrostatic pressure that created. So hydrostatic pressure that higher created at the um, at the sieve tube near the source, while the sieve tube near the sink has low hydrostatic pressure. So because of the hydrostatic pressure gradient created along the sieve tube from the source and sink that will force the flow and step of sucrose to flow from the source, from the sieve tube near the source to the sieve tube near the sink. So basically, the pressure flow hypothesis is about that. I mean, about the sucrose sink, source and the hydrostatic pressure itself. So this all Tanya. Untuk awak explain term source and sink as apply to the transport in plant. Jadi, untuk dua markah itu, source tu apa? Daripada gambar ni kita nampak source itu adalah kawasan daun yang manufactured, yang boleh manufactured uh, sucrose, yang boleh buat photosynthesis. So, the leaf, the leaf, plant organ which is leaf. Dan kalau sink ini adalah kawasan pokok yang uh, menerima sucrose, meaning sucrose unloaded to that area. Yeah, to marks the sucrose, sorry, the source is plant organ that assimilates substances such as sucrose and loaded substance into the sieve tube, example, leaf. While the sink is the site as food storage. Food storage, yeah. Site as food storage, which unloading of substances from flow work. Example, right. Example, like roots and fruits. So that is question 9, 2 marks. And last one, question 10. Explain how the transport in the phloem differs from transport in the xylem 3 marks. Jadi bagaimanakah proses pengangkutan dalam phloem berbeza dengan proses pengangkutan dalam xylem? Kita tahu kan dalam phloem ni angkut apa? Angkut uh, sucrose. Berbeza dengan xylem yang mengangkut air dan ion. Jadi, first, reference is phloem transport assimilate such as sucrose while xylem transport water and mineral ion. Next, difference, phloem sap flow upward and downward the stem of plants while water only flow upward in xylem. Kenapa phloem sap ni flow upward and downward? Kerana uh, Sing yang menerima sukros itu boleh jadi berada dekat bahagian bawah pokok seperti uh, root. Boleh jadi sing yang menerima sukros ataupun um, unloading sukros from the sink tube to the sink itu boleh jadi buah yang berada di bahagian atas pokok. Oleh sebab itu, pergerakan problem set boleh berlaku sama ada upward and downward. Okay? Boleh berlaku ke atas jika sing itu, for example, adalah buah. Boleh jadi berlaku pergerakan flower set itu ke bahagian bawah pokok jika sink itu adalah root. But then for water, uh, for water, transportation of water always flow upward. Maksudnya sentiasa berlaku daripada uh, bahagian akar bahagian bawah pokok mesti sentiasa naik ke atas. Kerana tarikan air yang berlaku yang menggunakan konsep uh, transpiration, kon, transpiration, cohesion tension mechanism adalah bermula apabila berlakunya evaporation daripada stoma. So, bila bahagian atas pokok uh, sentiasa mengalami kurang air ataupun low water potential, itu akan menarik air daripada bawah naik ke atas. Jadi, untuk air, transportation sentiasa berlaku secara upward. Dan akhir sekali, pesan yang ketiga adalah flow step move moved by pressure flow and silent set by cohesion tension. Okay, that's all for question transport system in mitochondria a compilation question. I wish you all the best for your coming to STM2. Thank you. Bye.